a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Brian Wilson Brian Douglas Wilson is an American musician, singer, songwriter, and record producer who co-founded the Beach Boys. After signing with Capitol Records in 1962, Wilson wrote or co-wrote more than two dozen top 40 hits for the group. In addition to his lifelong struggles with mental illness, Wilson is known for his unorthodox approaches to pop composition and mastery of recording techniques. And he is widely acknowledged as one of the most innovative and significant songwriters of the late 20th century. The Beach Boys were formed by Brian, his brothers Carl and Dennis, their cousin Mike Love, and friend Al Jardine. Brian, who grew up influenced by 1950s rock and roll and jazz-based vocal groups, originally functioned as the band's songwriter, producer, co-lead vocalist, bassist, keyboardist, and de facto leader. He co-wrote, arranged, and produced their LP Pet Sounds, considered one of the greatest albums ever made. The intended follow-up, Smile, was cancelled for various reasons, which included Wilson's deteriorating mental health. As he suffered repeated nervous breakdowns, Wilson's contributions to the Beach Boys diminished, and his erratic behavior led to tensions with the band. In the 1970s, he was increasingly reputed for his hermetic lifestyle and substance abuse. Following a court-ordered removal from the care of psychologist Eugene Landy, Wilson started receiving conventional medical treatment, and in the late 1990s, he began performing and recording consistently as a solo artist. He remains a member of the Beach Boys Corporation, Brother Records Incorporated. Wilson was the first pop artist credited for writing, arranging, producing, and performing his own material. He is considered a major innovator in the field of music production, the principal originator of the California sound, one of the first music producer auteurs, and one of the most famous examples of the outsider musician. Only 21 years old, when he received the freedom to produce his own records with total creative autonomy, he ignited an explosion of like-minded California producers, supplanting New York as the center of popular records and becoming the first rock producer to use the studio as its own instrument. Wilson effectively set a precedent that allowed bands and artists to enter a recording studio and act as their own producers or co-producers. The zeitgeist of the early 1960s is commonly associated to his early songs, and he helped develop the sound of the wistful flower power era that proceeded. In later years, Wilson was regarded as a godfather to an era of indie musicians who were inspired by his melodic sensibilities, chamber pop orchestrations, and recording explorations. He is often depicted in media as a genius. His honors include being inducted into the 1988 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and winning Grammy Awards for Brian Wilson Presence Smile and the Smile Sessions. In lists published by Rolling Stone, Wilson ranked 52 for the 100 Greatest Singers of All Time in 2008 and 12 for the 100 Greatest Songwriters of All Time in 2015. In 2012, music publication NME ranked Wilson number 8 in its 50 Greatest Producers Ever list, elaborating, few consider quite how groundbreaking Brian Wilson's studio techniques were in the mid-60s. He is an occasional actor and voice actor, having appeared in television shows, films, and other artists' music videos. His life was dramatized in the 2014 biopic Love and Mercy. Early Years and Performances Brian Douglas Wilson was born on June 20, 1942, at Sentinella Hospital in Inglewood, California, the eldest son of Audrey Neva and Murray Wilson. His two younger brothers were Dennis and Carl. He is English, Swedish, Dutch, German, and Irish ancestry. When Brian was two, the family moved from Inglewood to 3701 West 119th Street in nearby Hawthorne, California. Speaking of Brian's unusual musical abilities prior to his first birthday, his father said that, as a baby, he could repeat the melody from when the caisson go rolling along, after only a few verses had been sung by the father. Murray Wilson said, he was very clever and quick. I just fell in love with him. At about age two, Brian heard George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, which had an enormous emotional impact on him. A few years later, he was discovered to have diminished hearing in his right ear. 
The exact cause of this hearing loss is unclear, though theories range, from him simply being born partially deaf to a blow to the head from his father, or a neighborhood bully, being to blame. While Brian's father Murray was ostensibly a reasonable provider, he was often abusive. A minor musician and songwriter, he also encouraged his children in this field in numerous ways. At an early age, Brian was given six weeks of lessons on a toy accordion, and, at seven and eight, sang solos in church with a choir behind him. At Hawthorne High School, Brian was on the football team as a quarterback, played baseball and was a cross-country runner in his senior year. He sang with various students at school functions and with his family and friends, at home, teaching his two brothers harmony parts that all three would then practice. He also played piano obsessively after school, deconstructing the harmonies of the four freshmen by listening to short segments of their songs on a phonograph, then working to recreate the blended sounds note by note on the keyboard. He received a Wollenzak tape recorder on his 16th birthday, allowing him to experiment with recording songs and early group vocals. Surviving home tapes document his initial efforts singing with various friends and family in his senior year at Hawthorne High. In addition to classroom music studies, he sang at lunchtime with friends like Keith Lent and Bruce Griffin. Brian and Keith worked on a revised version of the tune, Hully Gully, to support the campaign of a classmate named Carol Hess when she ran for senior class president. Enlisting his cousin and frequent singing partner Mike Love as well as his own brother Cal, Brian's next public performance featured more ambitious arrangements at a fall arts program at his high school. To entice Carl into the group, Brian named the newly formed membership Carl and the Passions. The performance featured tunes by Dion and the Belmonts and the four freshmen, the latter of which proved difficult for the ensemble. The event was notable for the impression which it made on another musician and classmate of Brian in the audience that night, Al Jardine, who would join the three Wilson brothers and Mike Love a few years later in the Beach Boys. Songwriting Beginnings Wilson enrolled at El Camino College in Los Angeles, majoring in psychology, in September 1960. He continued his music studies at the community college as well. At some point in 1961 he wrote his first all-original melody, loosely based on a Dion and the Belmonts version of When You Wish Upon a Star. The song was eventually known as Surfer Girl. Though an early demo of the song was recorded in February 1962 at World Pacific Studios, it was not re-recorded and released until 1963, when it became a top 10 hit. Wilson, his brothers Carl and Dennis, Mike Love and Al Jardine first appeared as a music group in the summer of 1961, initially under the name The Pendletones. After being prodded by Dennis to write a song about the local water sports craze, Wilson and Mike Love together created what became the first single for the band, Surfing. Over Labor Day weekend 1961, Brian took advantage of the fact that his parents were in Mexico City for several days, and the boys used the emergency money his parents had left to rent an amplifier, a microphone, and a stand-up bass for Jardine to play. After the boys rehearsed for two days in the Wilson's music room, his parents returned home from their trip. Eventually impressed, Murray Wilson proclaimed himself the group's manager and the band embarked on serious rehearsals for a proper studio session. Recorded by Height and Dorinda Morgan and released on the Small Candix Records label, Surfing became a top local hit in Los Angeles and reached number 75 on the national Billboard sales charts. Dennis later described the first time that his older brother heard their song on the radio. As the three Wilson brothers and David Marks drove in Wilson's 1957 Ford in the rain, nothing will ever top the expression on Brian's face, ever. That was the all-time moment. However, the Pendletones were no more. Without the band's knowledge or permission, Candix Records had changed their name to the Beach Boys. Wilson and his bandmates, following a set by Ike and Tina Turner, performed their first major live show at the Richie Valens Memorial Dance on New Year's Eve, 1961. Three days previously, Wilson's father had bought him an electric bass and amplifier. Wilson had learned to play the instrument in that short period of time with Al Jardine moving to rhythm guitar. On stage, Wilson provided many of the lead vocals, and often harmonized with the group in falsetto. Looking for a follow-up single for their radio hit, Wilson and Mike Love wrote, Surfing Safari, and attempts were made to record a usable take at World Pacific, 
including overdubs, on February 8, 1962, along with several other tunes including an early version of, Surfer Girl. Only a few days later, discouraged about the band's financial prospects, and objecting to adding some chubby checker songs, to the Beach Boys live setlist, Al Jardine abruptly left the group, but rejoined shortly thereafter. When Candix Records ran into money problems, and sold the Beach Boys' master recordings to another label, Murray Wilson terminated the contract. As, surfing, faded from the charts, Brian, who had forged a songwriting partnership with Gary Usher, created several new songs, including a car song, 409, that Usher helped them write. Brian and the Beach Boys cut new tracks at Western Recorders including an updated, Surfing Safari, and, 409. These songs convinced Capitol Records to release the demos as a single. They became a double-sided national hit. Success and Record Producing Recording sessions for the band's first album took place in Capitol's basement studios in the famous Tower Building in August 1962. But early on Brian lobbied for a different place to cut Beach Boy tracks. The large rooms were built to record the big orchestras and ensembles of the 1950s, not small rock groups. At Brian's insistence, Capitol agreed to let the Beach Boys pay for their own outside recording sessions, to which Capitol would own all the rights, and in return the band would receive a higher royalty rate on their record sales. Additionally, during the taping of their first LP Brian fought for, and won, the right to be in charge of the production though this fact was not acknowledged with an album liner notes production credit. In January 1963, the Beach Boys recorded their first top 10 single, Surfing USA, which began their long run of highly successful recording efforts at Hollywood's United Western Recorders on Sunset Boulevard. It was during the sessions for this single that Brian made the production decision from that point on to use double tracking on the group's vocals resulting in a deeper and more resonant sound. The Surfing USA album was also a big hit in the United States, reaching number two on the national sales charts by early July 1963. The Beach Boys had become a top-ranked recording and touring band. Brian was, for the first time officially credited as the Beach Boys producer on the Surfer Girl album, recorded in June and July 1963, and released that September. This LP reached number seven on the national charts, containing singles that were top 15 hits. Feeling that surfing songs had become limiting, Brian decided to produce a set of largely car-oriented tunes for the Beach Boys' fourth album, Little Deuce Coop, which was released in October 1963, only three weeks after the Surfer Girl LP. The departure of guitarist David Marks from the band that month meant that Brian was forced to resume touring with the Beach Boys, for a time reducing his availability in the recording studio. For much of the decade, Brian attempted to establish himself as a record producer by working with various artists. On July 20, 1963, Surf City, which he co-wrote with Jan Berry of Jan and Dean, was his first composition to reach the top of the U.S. charts. The resulting success pleased Brian, but angered both Murray and Capitol Records. Murray went so far as to order his oldest son to sever any future collaborations with Jan and Dean. Brian's other non-beach boy work in this period included tracks by The Castells, Donna Loren, Sharon Marie, The Timers, and The Survivors. The most notable group to which Wilson would attach himself in this era would be The Honeys, which Wilson intended as the female counterpart to The Beach Boys and as an attempt to compete with Phil Spector-led girl groups such as the Crystals and the Ronettes. He continued juggling between recording with the Beach Boys and producing records for other artists, but with less success at the latter, except for Jan and Dean. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?